Hi, everybody. Nicole here from Hair of the Dog. How are you guys doing? I have a super special guest today that I am super excited to chat with and have you guys all be involved as well. I have Shelly Paulson from Minnesota up there. Woo! It's still snowing up there. My aunt in, uh, in South Dakota, I think, just got snow yesterday. <laughs> yeah, the northern Minnesota is still getting snow, but we have um, actual leaves forming on the trees. Oh, it's glorious. Yes. <laughs> so hard to believe it's been like 80s down here for the past couple weeks already. Um, anyway, um, Shelly is here. Shelly is one of my most favorite equine photographers. I think you're an equine photography genius. Um, oh, so yes, I'm super you. excited to have you here with us. Uh, why don't you tell us just a little bit about, about you and what you do? Well, I am solely an equestrian photographer. A lot of people are like, what, you only shoot horses? Like you don't do babies or weddings or families. And I mean, every once in a while I'll slip one of those in, but um, I used to be a wedding photographer and then I had um, an accident and hurt my head and weddings were just way too stressful. So I was like, I wonder if I could just make a living just doing horses. So I dove in and now I am making a living solely photographing horses. That's fantastic. Yeah, what is. I couldn't imagine. I, I have some friends that do weddings that love it. I think you either love it or like will make you crazy. <laughs> you know, I loved it when I was doing it. Like yeah. I have to say that there were so many years when I was super passionate about it. And um, it was probably the best training ground because yeah. all day long you're presented with challenges of light and location and moments and camera settings and which camera and which lens and you have to make all these decisions really fast and so I think it actually gave me a leg up especially for the commercial work I do because yeah. I'm often need to use you know off-camera flash or other kinds of situations where I have like very little control over what's yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. um, and so <laughs> I, I feel like it was photography boot camp, and if a photographer hasn't been through like the gauntlet of of wedding photography, they've really missed a, a, a intense learning opportunity. Yes, for sure. No, it's so true. Um, yeah, because I mean, you have to be able to produce in any situation that is changing all day long. I know for me just from finding inspiration for um, like style and images that I love and things that, you know, that just like, just work that I love to look at. There's a lot of wedding photographers that are like some of my most favorite photographers because they can produce some like pretty amazing things. Um, so yeah, so I always tell people to, to look outside of whatever genre you're shooting, like yeah. you look outside the photography industry, but at least start looking outside your niche for inspiration yeah. because otherwise it all just starts to look the same. <laughs> that is that is 100% true. And there's still wedding photographers whose work I will follow and look at because they're innovators. They're yeah. um, like like two two man, the the mans. They are just like they're always just doing things that are so outrageous and crazy and it's like I get really inspired looking at their work. Yeah, nice. Me too. Me too. That's fantastic. All right, so awesome. So yeah, so you used to do weddings. Now you do horses. Why, why did you choose horses? Why, what, what started your love of horses? I know for me, it runs deep from when I was um, eight years old. I had done like gymnastics and tap and like all the things, you know, for one season or one like, you know, 12 week lesson program that I'm like, nah, nah. So I wanted to ride horses. My mom's like, okay. <laughs> and then the first lesson, you know, I learned how to tack up and like clean the stall and brush the horse. We didn't even ride. So mom's like, this isn't gonna last. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm 42 and I still like want to go to the barn every day. And um, yeah, bought my own horse again. <laughs> so, well, yeah, it was a similar similar kind of journey. I mean, when I was ten, I started taking lessons, and basically from that point on, every summer was spent on horseback. And um, I didn't do the fancy riding you did. It was mostly like you know games and a few pleasure shows and stuff. But um, then when I I went to college, I kind of stopped riding in there. And then like the first job I got, I bought a horse. And yeah. I still got, I still have that horse. She turned 27 on Sunday. Oh. And um, yeah, and I've had her since she was two. So this is like, like, I think at some point here, we're going to cross that line of I've had her like more than half my life. Yeah. And um, I'll never have that opportunity again. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and I was actually working in graphic and web design and more and more of my clients wanted photos. Uh, so I just picked up a digital 
uh, rebel, <laughs> you know, like yeah. the old <laughs> silver body where you go over like 400 ISO and the grain is crazy. Um, and of course, you know, here's, I love horses and I have a camera. So first thing, one of the first things I pointed the camera at was horses. And um, from that point on, I took photos of horses a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. But it really wasn't until I quit weddings that I had like the, just the space to really go full on um, with the equine photography. But yeah, for sure, um, just started with a love for the horse. And then when I picked up the camera, it was kind of like, well, of course, these beautiful creatures that yeah. I love so much should be photographed. <laughs> nice. That's kind of how mine started, too. I started with, um, I was a zoological animal trainer for 13 years and I was always taking uh -huh. animals that I worked with, not having any clue what I was doing, you know, like on people yeah. professional, like uh, no right. idea. <laughs> but, uh, and then when I, I knew I had like an entrepreneurial bug and I didn't want to like continue working for somebody else. And, um, you know, I, I still love my job, but I was kind of like middle management. So I reported to the executive director and it was like, you know, I just, I lost the spark of my, the reason that I went into that world. Um, so yeah, so I ended up starting with families and pets because I was like, well, there's no way I can be just a pet photographer. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, you know, in that there's, many, there's you can make I think any niche work. Yeah, and I think I think it's becoming more and more possible. Like I feel yeah. like five, ten years ago, maybe there wasn't a market for it, yeah. but now it's common to be photographed with your pets. Yeah, which is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which is really awesome because I think people sometimes get a little bit, um, maybe not frustrated is the right word, but like put off a little or, or a little doubtful that they can make, you know, like pet photography, equine photography work. But the more of us there are, the more potential clients there are because there's more market education and more people know about it. So all of a sudden, as there becomes more of us, there becomes more potential clients to draw from because you don't have to spend as much time educating people that you exist. <laughs> yeah, or that it's a good idea because, yeah. yeah, like, I mean, I can't wait. I have a friend coming in a couple of weeks and I can't wait for her to photograph me with my dogs and my horses. And, I mean, my, my husband too, but, um, you know, just like, like, I can't imagine even if I wasn't a photographer not having photos with the pets that I love because you know the older we get the more we know how frequently we have to say goodbye to them and and now as a photographer I see that cycle happen a lot and so it's really a privilege to be able to kind of freeze those moments for clients for sure absolutely well speaking of clients who tends to be your your main target client well my business is divided into kind of three different parts and um, portraits are a part they were kind of the original foundation and yeah. then um I broke out into commercial work a couple years ago I mean I did some in 2009 and I was super overwhelmed I wasn't ready mm -hmm. and so um but a couple maybe like three four years ago I started doing more commercial work and then really shortly after that I started licensing more and more images to publications and then in the last year I've started doing some writing which is terrifying <laughs> and um, but it's gone well so but I'm just like oh how much writing do I want to do when it makes me this nervous right. but uh, you know so it's kind of a three-part business and then in just in general I have a stock photo library that I license images to um, publications and brands so there's a little bit of overlap between the brands and the editorial with my stock library Awesome. Awesome. That's fantastic. I think most of the people, most of us, I mean, I, I know even for me, like I, I think I could handle the pressure of commercial, but it doesn't fit my lifestyle because I've got two young kids and like the last minute of the commercial world, like we need this and we need it yesterday. It yeah. just does not, would not work with, with me. So <laughs> I really don't seek out any commercial work at all. Um, I think most of the people are mainly uh portrait like interested in adding mm -hmm. portrait stuff to there to maybe they shoot pets or you know whatever else they're already shooting but maybe they're not shooting a lot of um horses yet but who are your main for your portrait clients i know for me when i, I don't shoot a ton of horses i probably photograph maybe five horse clients a year so most of my clientele is dogs but um i still do a couple horses and my clients tend to be senior girls and their high school senior girls and their horse um or sometimes you know, somebody older, like some empty nesters. I had this amazing couple last year and they're Frisian and um, they were just hysterical. They loved this horse so much. And they were, I think, uh, 
we were, you know, in the, the sales room and like showing them the different images. And like, if we have to sell a grandchild, we will, because we want all of these things. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Forget the children. Forget the grandchildren. We yeah. love our horse. Yeah. I want this big picture of my horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It was so funny. But yeah, most of mine, I'd say 75, 80% of my horse clients are high school seniors and their horses. What about you? I would say it very similar, maybe not that high. Um, it's really hard to tell. This is something I should probably know, right? Um, <laughs> but I have quite a few end of life sessions that I call remember sessions. Oh, yeah. um, and, uh, and then just, I have a couple families that I do on a regular basis with their horses. Um, yeah, and then seniors. I mean, seniors are definitely have been a really consistent type of yeah. clientele that um and i love those sessions because yeah. you know it's they're at, the, they're at this like beautiful transitional peak moment in their lives and they're you know usually been riding a ton their horses look amazing and they look amazing and the life's amazing and you know all the pieces can come together to create some really really great images yeah yeah for sure i love that um what do you do for marketing your equine stuff? What do you do mainly now? I imagine now you have a lot of word of mouth. Um, yep. Was that is that your main marketing avenue now, or what kind of stuff do you do now? Or did you do when you got started to maybe start to find those clients? When I got started, before the internet was born. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> but there was a time in my very early career because I started in like 2004, 2005, and I'm not joking that you know, I mean, there was no Facebook. Like, right. and it was extremely hard to build a clientele because unless you were a horse show photographer, people didn't know about you. Right. And I, I never felt like horse shows were my thing. It was, it reminds me of school portraits. You're just kind of one after the other, and it's a great business model, but the the you know creative type in me couldn't handle that and so um i used to put postcards up and i still do at local tax shops and farm stores um i would run ads in local horse publications i still do that our um, dressage and eventing association i i photograph their banquet every year nice. and then they run ads for me and it's kind of a two-pronged approach in that I photograph their events. I'm there and I'm talking to people and they get to ask me questions and I get to put things like my products out on a table and have them, you know, kind of touch and feel some things and really think about it. And, and that crowd, the dressage and eventing crowd does tend to be the majority of my, my clientele just because of the part of the twin cities I live in. It's, a, yeah. it's very concentrated of those kinds of riders. Um, you know, obviously social media now has become, you know, a big source of leads and just general like name recognition, work recognition, you know, you tag your clients or they share and they tag you. Yeah. Um, but if I'm really, if I really look at it, I'm still getting a ton of leads from Google, which yeah. means my website, which yeah. means we can't ignore our websites, which a lot of people are like, I don't even need a website. I just need Facebook and Instagram and I'm good to go. Yeah. But Honestly, like a lot of the people hiring us for senior photos are not the seniors. A lot of times it's the parents or the parents, the senior might say, this is the person I want, but the parent, I can almost guarantee you is going to go to your website. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Yeah. I and so I feel like that's being overlooked a little bit by um, younger photographers starting out relying solely on social yeah. media. And, I've, after I really looked at things, I've decided I'm going to double down on blogging. I'm going to make sure yeah. constantly putting new stuff on my site and really keep it up there in Google. So I'm found. Yeah, no, that's so important. The SEO, I found um, that most of my clients come to me from Google. Uh, most come from the SEO. And then it's just so critical. I can't stress enough for you guys how critical it is to have a good web presence, to have a good website, to have a well-designed website. And you don't have to spend a fortune. It doesn't have to be involved. It can be like four pages, like a home page, mm -hmm. a page, a portfolio page, and an investment page. Like that's it. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be big and crazy. Just make it clean, easy to navigate, you know, not high end pricing stuff on there. Like I've never put no. like, my packages go from one thousand to three thousand dollars because people see the high one and they're like, oh no way. So you gotta keep <laughs> a little bit of price, but not too much. It's like the three bears. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but even That's if right. you get a great referral, like one of your clients is singing your praises and to their friend, 
their friend is still going to go to your website before they call you almost mm -hmm. every single time. And if your website is like, you know, really old fashioned, like the dark, there was a while that it was like popular to have a really dark background with like oh. letters um, yeah. and that it just looks really dated and it's hard to read and it's not a good user experience. And the same thing with the images that you choose to put on there, I would rather see you with like four images in your portfolio than like 20 where there's four great ones and like 15 okay ones. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, so, going in. and also with that portfolio to not show, I can do all the things, Yep. showing your favorite work that you wanna do more of. I yep. see so many people being like, I want to show that I'm just like everyone else and I can do these portraits just like right. everyone else. And I'm like, no, because if you, if your work looks the same as the next photographer is the next photographer is the next photographer, you right. will be shopped on price. Yes. And, and never win that. <laughs> never win that. And so I've endeavored to create work that's true to my heart and true to my aesthetic so that I can um, really get people excited about hiring me versus somebody else and un Feel like the investment is worthwhile yes yes yeah for sure um my good friend kaylee Greer, you guys know her from dog breath um i was talking to her like a year or two ago and she totally changed my perception of like how important it is to curate what you show like you can shoot different things but you really need to give some thought as to what you're putting out in your portfolio and your social media and to curate it to be the style that you want to be known for, to be the images that you want to create, the images that speak to your heart. You can still do other things. Like, mm -hmm. you know, she still shoots natural light for half the shots that are shoot. She just doesn't show it. Um, yeah. You know, like, I will do a studio session for a client, but I don't really show it because I don't want to do more of, you know, so if it doesn't fit in my curated style, it just doesn't get included in that kind of thing. So, that kind of just changed the way that I really thought about what am I showing and like, how am I presenting my brand and my work to, to the world? Um, so yeah, I'll share that. Yeah. One. I think, <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, we could do a whole webinar just on websites. <laughs> it's just, yeah, well, and isn't that, that's part of your business course, right? You talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. that in your business. Sure. Course. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it's so important. It's so important. Um, yeah, SEO, and there's a ton of great resources on SEO out there. Like if you just Google basic SEO, like top 10 <laughs> SEO things, I mean, yeah, there's, it's not, not that complicated. complicated. It just requires yeah. a consistent effort to at least get it started. And one of the big things with SEO is the length of your website. So that's something that does just take time, but there are tricks to get it going a little bit faster, like some backlinks from other sites, you know, signing up for the webmaster tools on Yahoo and Bing and submitting your site to be crawled by them so they know that it's there. Um, you know, your Google My Business, which, oh my God, when I moved, I think my Google <laughs> is still screwed up. So we moved from Pittsburgh to Charlotte. We built a house. So it's a brand new house on a brand new road that didn't exist. Oh no. So it's been super fun. I mean, it took a month before they would pick up my garbage. So. Oh my gosh, <laughs> moving is horrible. Is. I mean, it's worth it, but it's horrible, yes. Yes, oh my God. And, uh, and finally, like, and I think I got my Google thing shut down because I think they probably thought it was a fake address. And oh, then no. they thought that I was serving like more than my local area. And uh, oh my God, I was, it took months to get it settled. And I still think I lost a lot of my reviews. I need to email some past clients. Just be like, can you please go leave a review again? Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, awkward. I have that, but yeah, it got super frustrating. <laughs> yes. Well, and one thing I wanted to add to about marketing, because I know this is a question I get, especially from people who aren't like equestrians. And they're like, well, how do I even like get started? with marketing to equestrians in my area. And um, one of the things I suggest, and I suggest it for a lot of reasons, is to find a barn that, that has lessons, like riding lessons, and um, start to get to know people in the equestrian world and you know, do some practice sessions with people who have horses who are connected. Yeah. When you choose a person to practice on, Choose somebody with a social media following. I mean, this influencer thing is for real. Yeah. Um, and and so you kind of have to find your way in by being like them. I mean, that's been a marketing thing for a long time. Like, be where your clients are. Yeah. And so, you know, I, sometimes I go to horse shows or I go to a barn and I do a shoot for something. And it's like just meeting people and talking to them and being in the places that they are is really key. Like, it, 
like we have a horse expo here in town and I walk around and I see people I know and make friends and, you know, just like being in a place where the horse people hang out um, is, is really key. And there was a tack shop on my end of town for the longest time had my work hanging in the tack shop with yeah. my name next to it. And that was, um, they got free art for their tack shop and I got free advertising and, you know, it was a great trade. So there's, there's probably a tack shop or farm store or something in, in most major metros that would hang a photographer's work. And that's a really great way to get it in front of equestrians. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like the equestrian market is a lot of more kind of like old school marketing, like actual getting out from behind your computer and talking to people yeah. <laughs> is well, really, because, really important. And yeah, because horse people are, out in the barn they're out riding they're I think they're on social media a little bit less yeah because they're busy <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly yeah and I, I dogs are kind of similar too I mean but the horses especially I feel like the the actual people connection and getting out there and making connections in your community is so so important and it still works no matter what kind of niche you're doing that kind of marketing is never going to go out of style we right humans, we want to connect with people so yeah. Then you do business with people you know, like, and trust. So they need to know you, and then they can like you and trust you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if they don't know you. <laughs> so, yeah, it's super important. For yeah. sure. All right. So, yeah, so those are some awesome marketing tips. Tell us a little bit about um, maybe what you usually sell to your portrait clients or what your most popular products are. You do in-person sales, right? Yep. Yeah. I, I do in-person sales because I feel like it is part of – my job Agreed. um and it's not just to kind of take pictures and then throw digital files at people and be like don't i don't want to talk to you i don't want to sell to you they need you to sell to them yeah. <laughs> because in this day and age people for the most part are not going to end up with artwork on right. their walls like this unless you help them do that yeah and so um the reason i um do in-person sales is so I can show, you know, look at this beautiful giant canvas. I'll move the camera for people who are looking at vertical. Um, and then I have three canvases here. I have a 16 by 24, a um, 24 by 36, and another 16 by 24 to kind of show like, the, you know, kind of an art collage. And just to be able to say, well, this is a 16 by 24. It looks decent by itself on a wall, but look how it is if you have a big wall. Right. Um, and so I sell a lot of canvases. I sell a lot of metal prints. The questions love metal prints. Or maybe it's because Shelly loves metal prints. <laughs> but my yeah. but Shelly's clients love, love metal prints. Because I don't love metal. So it's oh, not really? even a thing and nobody asks for it. Um, I sell a lot of framed canvas and framed acrylics because that's what I love. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Well, I'm, I don't know if I've ever sold an, acry an acrylic, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, it is interesting. You know what you love. Yeah, there was a time when I was really into wood, and yeah. I sold a ton of it, and now I'm not into it anymore, and so I don't tell. You're right, so it's me. <laughs> That's funny. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, and, you know, people are get so concerned with the, oh, I'm selling, but you're not selling, you're serving. You're helping your right. because right. It's overwhelming to get like, oh, here's a whole bunch of images that are beautiful and I love, and now I need to figure out what the heck to do with them. And mm -hmm. maybe they're thinking they want something for their wall, but the only thing they've ever known is an eight by ten or maybe eight by ten. Yeah, team, you know, so <laughs> they're not going to be secure enough in their decision to be like, oh my god, should I spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on this giant wall piece that seems really, really, really big? <laughs> yeah. They're not. They're just going to order prints because that's what they know. You know, yes. maybe they'll get a little album or something, but they'll just get prints and digital files, which is really, really hard. Those are, I think, tend to be the most price sensitive products we can have is, um, you know, an eight by 10 and a, and a print. You know, I know for, uh, for myself, I don't have single eight by tens on my price list. I sell them in a bundle of five. You know, mm, that's a great idea. Yeah, because I, I never want to say no to my clients. And I didn't ever want to be, I don't have a minimum order. So I didn't ever want to be in a position where someone's like, I just want to come to you and do a session for an 8 by 10 And for me to be like, well, I sell it, but you need to buy more than that. Like, I didn't want to have that weird conversation. So it's easier to say, well, if you'd like some 8 by 10s I sell them in a package of five. <laughs> <laughs> 49 You know, yeah. so it's, 
it's an easier way to have that conversation. Now, of course, if I have a client that gets a beautiful wall piece and they just want a five by seven for their desk, I will 100% sell them a single five by seven. I just don't have it on my product guide. So yeah. I found that has been a super helpful way to um, help educate people on what's what's involved. I think that's part of the, the biggest challenge too, is people come to us and they see beautiful images and they're like, oh, I would love to have images like this. But they have no idea like what we do or what we offer or the possibilities of artwork. So they they don't even know what to ask. So it's our job to like show them what's possible and showcase the artwork on our website and talk about it and have that as part of the our you know um, inquiry inquiry process and our agenda yeah. process with them. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I do a dual approach too in that I do sell digital files. Um, yeah. But I also, every single client, everyone who hires me gets a photo album. Nice. Talk about something I'm passionate about. That is built into my collections that I have. Every oh. collection has an album. Yeah. And then all the digital, they get digital files of the album images. Yep, perfect. And that way, if they take it to Walmart, their flash drive to Walmart, and they print it out and it looks horrible because yep. it does. Yep. then they are going to see that that was not what I recommended and that is not how the images look printed. And so they basically have a reference in the album plus a beautiful album that they can enjoy a scope of photos, you know, between 30 and 75, depending on the size of the album. Yep. And um, I just love that. I feel like it's a compromise between I'm just getting a bunch of digital files and wanting people to have prints and enjoy their photos over and over again. And you can only put so many on your walls. Like exactly. personally, my walls are full. I don't have a big house. Um, and my walls are almost too full of photos. <laughs> and so, um, so I get it. Like, so I give people a generous print credit and an uh, album. And then well, most of the time, then they add some things on top of there. Yeah. The other thing I really love about in-person sales is we talk about the images. And, yeah. you know, I can put them up side by side if they're similar and we can talk about what may, what might make one better than the other. And then like, well, what do you want retouched? Do you like hair flying in the backlight or do you want me to kind of tone that down? Yeah. Like, is this thing on the horse a scar or a marking? I mean, right. I get to that level of detail with people when we sit down and that way I'm able to really, um, instead of just lightly retouching all the images, yeah. I only retouch the images that they order. Yeah. And um, that saves me a lot of time, but it also allows me to be even more careful with what I'm doing when I retouch images for clients. And really every image is a carefully edited work of art yeah. instead of just, you know, because of my time, just kind of having to half do it um, for each image. So yeah. I agree. I'm the same way. Um, Kathy wants to know where you print your albums. Uh, Miller's um, and Pix Pro. Yes, I'm a huge, huge Miller's MPix, MPix Pro. They're all one company, by the way, um, fan. And I, I, use, I print their signature album. Yeah, nice. I do my albums from Fineo and um, I, my low end and my high end albums, Fineo and the Elements and the Art One. And then my middle album is the press album from Pro DPI. Um, oh, okay. It's my most popular because it's the middle one. Because <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> then people buy in the middle. <laughs> yes, yes. I was uh, I was with um, Sarah Earnhardt of Sarah yeah. Beth Photography the other day, and she had some Vision Art Book albums, uh, or she had a Vision Art Book album. And I used to do only Vision Art when I was wedding photographer, but the cost of them was a little is a little high for for me for portrait clients. But once I saw it, I'm like, looks like I'm going to be going and getting a sample from Vision Art because they they print on that beautiful fine art gicle uh you know cotton paper and it's just delicious and i'm sure i have clients that are going to want to spend extra for that amazing well and the beauty of having something like that like a high-end either art piece or album is that then it makes your normal ones look really affordable yes exactly <laughs> People buy that high-end one, but it's yep. a price anchor that people are like, oh, well, gosh, that's beautiful, and I'd love to do that. But it gives them permission to invest in kind of that middle-of-the-road one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it makes the other ones look great. <laughs> Sarah's on here. She said, you're giving away my secrets <laughs> with a smiley face. <laughs> um, I saw when I was at Park Zealand, um, Craig from Photography, 
um, he had one of his Graffy Studio albums there, and it was beautiful. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm like we, were, we easily, uh, we easily get uh, lusting after different <laughs> products. But I think probably because we're so used to what we're selling, we're like, oh, shiny, something new. something new. This is amazing. That is that is one of the things I miss about going to WPTI, which I used to go and work for Zenfolio there, and yeah, I I just. I miss being able to walk around and just have that discovery of new product yeah. experience. Yeah, I remember, I think it was the WPPI that I went to that they were there when White Wall was there. I literally saw there, because I I had never wanted to sell acrylics before because I'd never seen an acrylic that wowed me. But mm -hmm. from like across the trade flow, trade show floor, it's like a moth to a flame. I was like, oh, look at those. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So good. So good. Oh, awesome. Some like great knowledge we're dropping here. Um, I think we maybe want to, like, for people that maybe are just, starting to get into pet photography or into equine photography maybe they're doing people or dogs or whatever but they haven't grown up around horses or they're even if they have been around horses they're not really sure for getting into equine photography specifically you created something amazing didn't you i did ah, did i tell the story i think we should tell them about it i think so okay so this is the little announcement i was hinting at and I don't know, if you follow me on social media, you might have uh, seen a post earlier this winter about, I was asking for ideas for an ebook, for a, like a bunch of ebooks possibly. And I got some great ideas. And then Nicole reached out to me and she says, can we talk? Now, those of you who don't know Nicole, she is just a fantastic pet photography educator and she has great systems in place and tons of knowledge and she's like let me help you and i said please help me because this is not my area of expertise and really like the you know selling ebooks and 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 creating educational content yes i have a youtube channel and whatever but i'm a little bit haphazard i'm not like a super focused you know person so no knowing nicole and knowing how smart she is and how successful she is i was like yes please let's talk <laughs> and uh so we have some plans but our plans started with an ebook that's uh focused on getting started with equestrian photography and we named it the quick start guide to equestrian photography and it's 30 pages of goodness about safety and about handling horses and about posing and what am i forgetting <laughs> yeah we have the horse behavior on there yeah. working safely Shelly's tools, her favorite camera lenses. The camera settings. Yep. Preparing the horse and rider for the session. Um, getting all those ears up, why it's so important. And all the little tricks because horses are not like dogs. Usually dogs, most of them. Um, you know, you can get some different sounds. And there's a sound or two for horses, but they, they're a little bit, I think, harder than dogs. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. You get yeah. a good squeak around a dog and you're yeah. you're usually good for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and then posing horse and rider. Because I know when I started shooting horses, pho photographing horses. Um, <laughs> yeah, you have to be careful I, with that one. <laughs> I, um, you know, I get out there and it's funny when I photograph dogs, it was so much like dog, dog, dog. Okay. Then I bring in the owner and I do some stuff. But when it's the horses, it's like the horse and rider for the majority of it. And I do just mm -hmm. the horse by itself, but it's usually the horse and their owner for the majority of the session. And I just like, how do I start creating variety? Um, because this is hard. <laughs> yeah, it is hard. <laughs> Cause you got like this thousand pound flight animal that, you're trying to like get them to stand some way and a human to stand a certain way and then there's chaos all the time because horses move a lot and yeah. um so i break down a bunch of poses it's it's interesting because a lot of people think i don't pose people right and the truth is i pose everyone all the time yeah, yeah. i just i just don't heavily pose like i don't have i don't pose down to the fingertips you know right. like I just generally give people enough direction so that they feel um, like confident in what I'm doing mm -hmm. and confident in their pose. And then I kind of let the magic unfold. And so that's um, 
what I do is I basically share my framework of what is it about eight different eight, yeah, yeah. six to eight different poses um, of just kind of how I direct them into that position yeah. and then what happens after that. So that's yeah. a that's a big part of the book. And I think it's something that um, somebody especially who hasn't had a lot of experience with equestrian photography is really, really going to benefit from. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the when you're photographing, especially a high school senior, like they're, they're, and even anyone, any human in front of your lens is going to be like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. So yeah. by being able to give them that like light direction and kind of set them up and say, okay, now do this and bend this way and like make sure you turn a little bit this way. And you tell them, you know, I, one of my favorite lines is if it feels uncomfortable, you look great. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's very true. The more random you feel sometimes, the better it's going to look. But um, but I think it's so important so that they then become more confident and comfortable in front of your camera because you're telling them what to do in a nice way. And you're telling them, oh, my gosh, this is beautiful. You can show them like a the back of the camera. I give them a little sneak peek. Look how gorgeous it is. Yep. Yep. And then they just they they start to just relax. And then you can really start to create that connection, which I think you're masterful at creating that connection. You talk about that in the ebook too, about how you can really get that connection um, between horse and rider, which is just mm -hmm. what, what people want. That's why they're hiring you. Yeah, totally. They don't just want all posed portraits. And so it's right. like, how do you make that transition from the posed portrait to the moments between yeah. them and their horse? And uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, I know when I'm photographed, if I'm not, if the photographer's not talking to me and giving me positive feedback, I get super nervous. Yeah, right here. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, so posing, I think, is um, a, like just critical. Like you can't not go into a, a session and without poses. And um, maybe you could share about kind of our little extra yes. bonus yeah, sure. that will help people with that. Yeah, you know, when you get to a session, you're like, oh, gosh, I wish I had that here because I kind of forget there was something. What exactly was it? Ooh. As part of the ebook, we have a little um, sticky album, like mobile app that you can download on your phone that has all of Shelly's favorite poses in it. So you can just be like, hold on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this one. Okay. You're doing it on the you're doing it on the fly, like, oh, I need to check my camera here really quick. <laughs> or just like walking around for a second, you can just say, Go ahead, take them for a little walk right there. And mm -hmm. then, you know, and then and you can be ready to go. So that's part of it. It's super cool. Um yeah, Holly wants to know if there's anything about choosing locations. Uh, there's a few sessions she's had with horses, oh, hold on, where the locations can be messy. We don't have mm -hmm. locations particularly in this one specifically, because I don't know about you, Shelly, I pretty much almost always shoot at the barn that the horse lives at 90% yep. of the time. Um, and really it's just about, you know, anything with photography is always like, um, it's kind of the opposite of a, a painter. Like a painter has a blank canvas and you're adding things. In photography, we're subtractive. So we're like, okay, there's all of this. We don't want all of this. How can we subtract? So I find yeah. a long lens and you can usually find something. There's fence lines, there's a side of a barn, there's you know beautiful light from the, if you close the barn. I mean, you're up in Alberta, so there's definitely indoor places because you're cold. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, just doorway light. You know, there's yeah. there's things you can usually do at every spot, um, but we might have to add that to it. Well, and that is yeah. that is coming with some future projects that we. <laughs> so that's definitely on the on the on the what's the word? Anyway, it's in the plans. It's already been outlined. So yeah. So yeah. watch for more resources to come, but they won't be coming right away because I'm about to head into our very short summer here in Minnesota. And uh, so so we're looking at, you know, releasing future resources, but not right away. So this is, this guide is, is gonna be just great for people wanting to get started um, and be successful right out of the bat versus, you know, kind of struggling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's such a quick, easy win. And it is, somebody's asking if it's available now. Tammy was asking if it's available now, and it is. I just put a link. Did it show up? I think. Um, yeah, there it goes. Hairofthedogblog.com slash equine. For the next week until um, next Tuesday, the 14th, it's actually intro pricing. So it's only $79. Uh, it'll be 97 after the week. 
But I mean, truly, it's a quick, easy read. It's quick, it's literally quick start. So you can go through, you can read it in a sitting and it's chock full of like so much good information. I learned things reading through it. It was awesome. Um, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's it's Holly. Holly. <laughs> She's from Alberta. Oh, maybe yeah. you're talking to Holly. Never mind. Yeah. Forget I just said anything. Go ahead, Shelly. What were you saying? Oh, I was just gonna say it's you know it's it's I've taken what like thirteen, fourteen years of experience and and really consolidated it. One of my things whenever I do a video or an ebook or anything is I don't want to waste anyone's time. Right. And so it's it's very concise. It's easy to read. There's lots of photos and illustrations. Um, and so it's 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 a guide to get you started quick. But there's a lot of meat in yeah. the actual ebook. And um, I really enjoyed writing it. It's always fun because it makes me to really think through. Well, how do I approach that and and put it into words? So absolutely, yeah. No, it's really great. And truly, the posing and the capturing connection stuff is. So, so key. Um, Kathy is asking, is that with the mobile app? Yeah, the mobile app's included. So yep. when you guys, um, if you go to hairthedogblog.com slash equine, it'll take you to the um, place where you can get your, <clears throat> excuse me, your guide and you just sign up there and it'll take you, it's actually into like the Hair of the Dog Academy, a little product and you can download it there and you'll see the link for the mobile app in there as well. So it is all right there. Um, yeah, do you guys have any other questions about that? I know somebody asked back here, and so I forget who it was, it was pretty far back there, about strobes with horses. Um, mm -hmm. And I know from my experience, most of them are usually okay. Sometimes you yeah. might find one that's not, and it's all about communicating for me with the owner, and, yeah. and, and they know their horse, and testing it in a safe environment, like, you know, <laughs> and far away, not like right up in their face. Um, but yeah, I found most of them have been pretty pretty okay with it. Yeah, the the most scary part about it for the horses that I've used strobes with is the softbox. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Itself is kind of a terrifyingly large black box on a stand. Um, but usually, if you just let them go up and sniff it um, and check it out, they're fine. The actual flashing doesn't seem to bother them. I I had one horse that every time she'd like startle. <laughs> it was my friend it was a friend's horse and she was just and she was just rolling she's like really you're the only horse and it was like at a horse show where I was doing black backgrounds for um the riders and we'd had horse after horse and her very mellow quarter horse was just every time <laughs> starting at the flat. yeah yes they're all <laughs> they're all special snowflakes <laughs> they are <laughs> so true of horses they know, you know if we have tips on IPS and ebook in person sales. Not in this ebook, but um, in the future thing, Shelly is putting together an amazing yep. equine photography, very comprehensive course um, yep. that will be probably probably next uh, fall, winter at the earliest. But um, there's a lot of free IPS information, Diana, on the Hair of the Dog blog. If you just go to hairofthedogblog.com and search IPS or in person sales in the search bar, you'll find lots of things there. Um, Vonda wants to know if you do most of your photos with natural light or flash. Mostly with natural light. Yeah, me it's too. Um, pretty rare that I use a flash. Most of the time it's uh, it's probably commercial work or I'm trying to do something funky. Yeah. <laughs> I know the only time I usually use a strobe is I like to do like um, to go in inside somewhere and then use the strobe. I'm here. Horse and rider's next, strobes behind horse and rider, coming yeah. back for me just to get some rim light, just a black and white rim light thing. That's really the only thing I usually use my strobe for um, yeah. with horses. Next I think that really helps black background sh shoots, especially yeah. if the horse is black. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've seen too many horse tip, ear tips just kind of fade off into yeah. blackness. Yeah. So. yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Shelly, for joining us. I think this was like so much great information. Thank you all of you guys for joining us. I really appreciate you taking your time out of your day to join us here. Um, <clears throat> you can check out the guide over at hairofthedogblog.com slash equine, and you can save some money. Um, it's only $79 until next Tuesday. So hopefully you find that helpful, and um, we'll see you around the Facebook group. Thanks for having me. Of course. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.